stoppages and referee Stephen Hughes has called time on this match and it's another two points drop from Maidstone we said pre-match Piers that we did not want Maidstone to draw three games in a row after like they did against Bath and they've had the seven wins and now it's been three draws in a row again six points dropped in those last three games you get all of those obviously you're up top level with Yeovil potentially but considering how that match went for Maidstone and how Western Supermare got themselves quite into that there's a potential to think that actually Maidstone like against Welling like against Farnborough might well be quite happy with taking a point back because that could have got a heck of a lot of worst if a couple of chances have been taken by Western Supermare in the end there yeah no I think uh, no, Maidstone definitely had that first half got that early goal and uh, and after that we sort of dominated that first half had a lot of possession um, and then, you know, come out for the second half and West Supermare seemed to have, I mean, whatever was said in the change room seemed to work. So they came out stronger, had a lot more of the ball than they did in the first half and they got their penalty and they took their chance. And I think they'll be very happy with the point. Um, you know, it would have been nice to go back to Maidstone with three points, but one point's better than none at the end of the day. And I'm sure uh, George and the team will look onto the positives and look onto... Um, next week's fixture exactly and it's a full week ahead for Maidstone which is a rarity so far this season because there's been so many Tuesday night games that they've had to play and certainly in the last two or three weeks they've been very busy Saturday Tuesday a very rare midweek off for the Stones to fully prepare on one game rather than two and that Chesham game is going to be big we'll get to that later on and obviously Joe and Nigel will bring you commentary of that for the podcast and for the Stones TV as George and the players are first up to everyone in the NK group stand. As the uh, as the, the song Umbrella comes out, trying to be slightly ironic, as the rain's pretty much stopped yeah. out there now and the sun's broken out. The, the lighting department have done a terrific job of uh, potentially lighting us up for this afternoon. You can see a few of the uh, coaching staff and management team on the pitch as well. A few disappointed, furrowed brows and... Uh, Certainly some injuries, some knocks, some full 90 minutes. You've got to play with the squad that you've got. Maidstone have got all those options. It's frustrating to see a couple more points potentially dropped by the Stones. But uh, a good account for the most part against Western Supermare. But, uh, you know, we did mention how they had that barnstorming win against Torquay. And to be fair to them, you know, four points from six of them, that's going to help them in their pursuit of safety this season that's going to probably put them a couple more spots away from the bottom five or six as the players making their way towards the sidelines here the Wanjal Smith family who had uh, nothing but praise for uh, everyone at the club and everyone on the, the comms and media side of things us included nice to be your eyes and ears when you're not able to get here a few embraces a few claps fist bumps high fives etc etc and um, couldn't help but see from his body language there and so will be the first one to admit and for most of the players there for Maidstone just a bit disappointed like you were saying I'm right on full time there Piers yeah, unfortunate not to be able to get as Harley Earl says hello to us just unfortunate not to be able to get that second killer goal in it happened a lot last season as well you know not just under hack number George as well it's getting that second killer goal to try and finish matches off and Maidstone did have their chances this afternoon didn't they but credit to Weston for getting themselves into the play this afternoon and did very well as uh, Sol Wanjo Smith's dad just uh, waves us off as well for now um, but yeah Maidstone will be frustrated but I do still try and take it half full piers this glass because another afternoon there especially right at the end you know I mean we had it at Welling right near the end with a post being hit at nil nil Corn seemingly headed one off the line there potentially yeah, getting the ball punched onto him by um, by Kovalan as well time, yeah. so it could be all sorts of alternative events could have happened and even before the penalty was given on the hour mark I'm shocked that Weston did not have a penalty for that one where Ruben Reed had a couple of chances in the first 30 seconds to try and get that penalty they they did deserve one in the game the way that they've done it but they have got themselves uh, a point from this afternoon I think they'll be happy with that as well against 
Mason set exactly a very high been upside. Been form and and um, that's what's interesting. I'm going to have a quick skirt into the league board, league league board, league table as well to see where exactly that finds the stones. Now I don't mind us talk amongst yourselves. You know, it's all 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 live, all all good fun, all of this. So you overall won their match in the end. Yeah, Maidstone down to fifth as it stands with the uh, the results of some of the other ones. I mean, again, it's only a minor slip. Do you think it's only a point? You know, it's a point inside the playoffs. Um, it's two points away from Avely. Yeovil seemingly trying to do an Ibsfleet and or a Sutton and try and have one hand on the league trophy. I keep saying that, you know, you can't win these titles in October, but you can certainly get yourselves out of contention. And Maidstone, you know, it's hoping that these home games that we're going to have coming up, try and get them, you know, all replayed. And we've got a couple of Tuesdays at the end of the month um, to get the Haven and Truro games done. So we'll be back on an even number by the time the cup run continues or ends hopefully the former rather than the latter of course um pierre manchi 13 goals now for this season he had six for each of his sides last season so with six months to go and manchi looking like a potential solid bet to be uh, one of the top scorers in the division this season he's uh, really led the line well this season he brings something different than what jack barham did last season i mean clearly about a foot <laughs> yeah, at maybe, least. A, maybe a bit of height maybe a bit more than that potentially afternoon Jack doing well with all the shop there are thereabouts in the playoffs um, in the National League of course there's another Avanti West Coast fizzles past can't have too bad a transport links here to be fair although you said it took you a bit of time to get here from one train station to another so clearly it goes goes past it doesn't stop it doesn't kick anybody out to, uh, to Western and Obviously not seen too much of Western myself here this afternoon, but uh, certainly been a bit grey than it normally is as the uh, the winter, autumn and winter months are settling in. Um, but yeah, for, for Maidstone, you know, what exactly was it? Was it more Western Supermare getting back into the game or was it Maidstone making the sloppy errors? Certainly for the penalty, you can't deny that not being a sloppy error, but what else could Maidstone have done to shut those those chances out from well, Western this afternoon. I, I think it was a. I think it was a bit of both. I think Western Supermare played well to get back into the game, especially after the first half. Maidstone looked like we dominated a majority of that half, and they did well to get back into it. They created chances. They made it awkward for the Maidstone defence. I think with this slippery surface as well, it made it made it definitely more tricky. And uh, yeah, unfortunately, that that penalty wasn't wasn't ideal. And and Western Supermare get away with one point which is I think is a great result for them um, but uh, it's we'll take, I, we take the point away from home it's a long journey away from home and now I think we've got to go on and focus on the next game take what we can from this game and, and move on patching up the troops again as usual because obviously there's several not in the match day squad that uh, have short to medium term injuries potentially that uh, might be causing them some issues I mean Rafe Brown got some more minutes Chi and Greenwich may well come back he in. He looks fantastic as well, Ray Brown, when he came on. He, he looks did. really, really positive. Which obviously gives a bit of competition for Greenwich. He might not walk back into the team against Chesham on Saturday. As I mentioned, Chi and, and Reese both missing from the 16 this afternoon. Um, you know, De Graft come on and had himself uh, a few minutes at the end there. Tried to impact the game as well. Just trying to work out whether it is off camera having a chat, but it's only two of our own fans having a, a lively loud debate as as we're always entitled to do great to see Bivish back in the match day squad as well because I know he's not been around it too often so to see him get a half hour as well played fairly well fairly solid in that midfield um, and obviously yeah with the uh, the replacement from Petrasso it was a slightly less attacking option given to Maidstone by him coming on which was immediately corrected with um, I well, say so not immediately to be fair because the graph was another 10-15 minutes before he came on because um, obviously Kipriano Brown was more of a straight swap so it seemed to be that Maidstone just wanted to soak up a bit of pressure after that equaliser came in and then once they'd weathered that storm for the next 10 minutes or so after that they were making sure that uh, they weren't going to have any issues uh, at the back and to be fair Reed was strong as an ox all afternoon and was, putting yeah. challenges in on Fowler when he had his shirt back from him and Hoyt as well uh, a similar couple of grapples. I mentioned Gurung getting in with one on him near the end of the match as well. But Maidstone, I think on balance, I think you've probably got to be sensible, a bit level with this and say that uh, a point is not the worst result in the world. It's just the same as it was 
after we'd gone to Bath, it's those three draws in a row, it's the momentum, you know, the three draws in a row after a defeat's not bad, three draws in a row after seven wins, again, you've got to try and be half glass full rather than empty, because that's probably a good thing, that you've still got an undefeated run, because that's ten in a row now that Maidstone have failed to lose, you only have to go back to last season, and it was no wins in 25, so... Again, you know, Project Telecobi might be uh, slightly stuttering a little bit with these, these draws, these six points dropped that again would see us two behind Yeovil as it stands in the table. But uh, I think being in and amongst the pack has certainly been something that Maidstone have been about, certainly in the 15-16 season. Uh, the season we eventually won the league with Dorking. Dorking did have quite a head start on most, the same like Ebbsfleet did, and then Sutton ended up catching them up. So it's never a foregone conclusion. Maidstone, this will hopefully be their third full season in South since Reformation. They've been promoted both times before. Here's hoping that it could be a third one in a row for them.